Whether you're an assistant editor or you're the editor doing the assistant editor's job for yourself, organizing media is absolutely essential. I'll be honest, don't be like me and end up having to organize stuff when your project gets too busy. The best assistant editors out there will open up a project and they'll begin to create bins and a structure of organization so when anything comes in, you know exactly where it goes. I also uh, wanted to do this demo because I'm, I'm finding, especially Final Cut users coming over to Premiere Pro asking, um, are there any ways to detect what videos have been used in the timeline and which ones I haven't used? Uh, and there sure are. There's some great ways. And that's what we're going to describe in this episode of No Stupid Questions about organizing our media. Let's go have a look. This is a typical workspace that we're looking at in Premiere Pro where our project bin is a little bit small down there. So I'm going to hit the maximize frame, which is the tilde key in North American keyboards, and open this up. And when we open this up, we've got our project bin inside here. And in this particular project, we have everything inside source. And when I open this up, I've got everything inside here. A little tip, if you use the option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, you can open and close everything at one time. So if I'll go back and open this up with Alt, Option, click, everything opens up, holding Option, Alt, click again and it closes everything up. So when I open this up, I have my bin structure. Sometimes you just want to be able to uh, go to a higher level inside here. Of course, inside each one of these, you can open up and look at the, the files inside there. Uh, this is the list view, and down at the bottom, we also have a thumbnail view. And that view uh, is where you were looking at uh, this. This was really the top end media. So if we go back to my list view, although it looks like I'll be looking in the archive, I'm not. I'm going to be looking all the way up at the top level, which is the uh, outside directory, the parent directory, if you will, for this. If I double click on this source, by default, this opens another window. And I don't like that. I'll just tell you that I like this to open in the same window, much like I'm working in the Finder or the desktop on Windows. So if you like that behavior, there's two things you can do. You can add modifier keys or you can change the preferences. Let's go look at the preferences. It's in the Edit menu, Preferences on Windows, or in Premiere Pro, Preferences on the Mac. In General Settings here, we can see right down in this area, in Bins, double click open in new window. You can have it also open in place, which is what I prefer, or open in tab. I'm going to leave these as a default and then I'll use the modifier keys. So double clicking with control is open in place. Double click with alt is open in a new tab. So let me cancel out of there. I'll close this window. I want to go into source and I want this window to replace with these contents. Control on Windows, Command on Mac, double click, and I'm inside there. Double click, and I'm going inside each one of these. Double click, and there are my files. That's just one way to work. You'll also notice that I'm in thumbnail view inside here. I could have taken this to list view if I want to. Now, the first thing you might be thinking is, if I'm in this kind of view and I'm deep inside here, either list or thumbnail, how do I get back out? This is really easy to get lost inside here. So look in the upper left-hand corner, and this is getting you out. Go back up one level, up one level, up one level. Let's also explore something else. I'm going to bring my window back, and I'll do something that I've seen um, some editors like, and that is a whole window full of bins. So let's take this to list view, and I'll go back to uh, my source. Again, Alt or Option, whoops, just to click to make those open. Um, let's go to my R3D files, and with this second window, I'm going to dock this window. So instead of just having it floating, which is just fine, but it would be easy to have this hidden behind something else. In the upper left-hand corner inside here, if you click on that and drag, you will see drop zones. So I'm still holding my mouse. If I let go right here, it's going to drop it in a tab behind here. But if I want this over on the right-hand side, I'm going to let go and it's going to show up in a second window. Let's go even further. Let's go open our titles. Again, double-click in a double window drag this down and put this in the drop zone in the bottom. How about our audio files? Double click, take this, 
and drag this below inside there. And notice I've got list views with my uh, folders here. Over here, I've got media, audio, and I have thumbnails inside here. This might be the kind of view that you like. Everything is completely customizable. And of course, go to the window menu, workspace, and you can save these as a new workspace. Workspaces also remember multiple displays. So you might actually have this display on or, or this uh, layout on a second display. So I've got my timeline editing in here. I've got my uh, transmit display so I can see it. And then I'm organizing all my media over here. That's a really popular way to work. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go back and reset everything to where I was. So I'm just going to reset my current workspace. Yes. And we go back to that. All right. Next up is searching for media. So if I wanted to search for, let's say, all the R3D media inside there, right now it's going to say search in all uh, or visible. The visible means that if I have the R3D folder open, it will only be searching inside that visible folder. If I'm at this higher level and I type in R3D, R3D, enter, You'll notice that it doesn't hide the other folders, but it does just show me all the R3D files that in this example happen to be in one folder. I can also use this to say, just show me all the audio. And now I'm only looking at audio files. And just as you'd expect, search for video, and it's going to show me all the video. Now, you'll notice in here, it's video in subfolder. So it's able to look deep inside and find all of those folders. So uh, we also have another find command, command F or uh, control F on Windows. Uh, here I can search for two different criteria and there's uh, a bunch of uh, points in here and then operators and I'm going to search for speed freaks, click find and it finds this. The difference here between the find and the search, find does not eliminate anything else. Search does. Search temporarily hides everything else so I'm only looking at that. I find that searching feature is uh, a little bit uh, more advantageous to the way that I work. Um, okay, so we've got those in there. We can also create new bins, and I'm going to, again, maximize my window to make this a little bit easier. Let's go back down uh, to one of these. Let's go to my um, converted folder. Oh, yeah, I, showed, I was going to show you the alternate way. So double-clicking, here's a window. Here's Alt or Option on the Mac, double-clicking, and it created a new... Uh, folder in here. Remember when I actually had four separate windows inside here? Each one of those windows could have tabs on them. So think about the possibilities, you know, four, eight uh, separate windows, each with multiple tabs, either scenes or days or shots or camera, whatever you want. Uh, let me just close that back up and go back to my media and the control key or command on the Mac is opening that up in place. So let's say that I'm the assistant editor and this is the proverbial uh, hard drive from hell that you get. Um, we know those people. They don't shoot with slates and yeah, they just scare us. They give you the hard drive and it's like, yeah, the media is there. You open it up and you just have everything. There's graphics, there's uh, video, audio, synced audio, unsynced audio, and you need to start putting that together. So we could do something as simple as sort by these columns up at the top. So for instance, uh, I could be sorting by video info right here. Notice that when I click on video info, this particular project um, actually has a bunch of different size video in it. In this particular folder that I'm looking at too, we're looking at 720, we're looking at HD footage, and if I was out here at another level, um, we could be looking at the, the red 4K media also. So let's say that I took this and I wanted to uh, select these, which I could have searched for 720, and I want to create a bin with that 720 media inside it. With that selected, um, there's several different ways of doing this. I can press Control B um, or Command B, and it will make a new bin for me. The only problem with doing it that way is it doesn't put that media in the bin. So it's much smarter to select this and drag it down all the way to the right into a new bin. It's actually highlighted the bin so I can just type 720 enter. 
So if you think about that for a second, remember we can sort by type, we can sort by size, we can sort by media. So you could sort, select, bin, drop, sort, select, boom, boom, boom. Before you know it, that huge hard drive is now starting to divide into smart sections. Okay, so I could close that up. Now that's not in my view. Now we're looking at a whole bunch of 1080p. So very easy, I could select all of that and do the same thing, drop that down. It's ready, 1080, enter, boom. Now I've just sorted that one folder into my two different uh, media assets. Beautiful, wonderful, excellent. Uh, what are some other sorting capability that we have? Well, we give you a bunch by default, but I'm gonna blow you away by all the extra stuff that we have to sort by. Uh, obviously things like frame rates, media start, duration, video info, tape name, description, log, whether something is a good shot or not. You can either click in here and then you can sort by what is good and what is not. Find what is good, what's offline, what's online. But actually in this upper right hand corner, metadata display, here we can open up a larger view of all of this stuff. So I'm gonna open this up and show you, this is the Premiere Pro Project Metadata Panel. And if you are ever wondering about video and audio usage, um, this is where you can go and find that, right there. Video usage, audio usage, okay. And now it shows up right there. I'm gonna actually drag this uh, over to the right-hand side, even before my labels and you'll notice it has a number so this one has been used three times this one's two times two times one time and when i click on it mouse over you can actually see where it is if i click on it, it's going to take me right to that project fantastic for documentaries great for those wedding shots where you're like did i use this one already now you can see these down here in the bottom have not been used, so I can feel free to use those. Let's go and look at a few other categories that are useful in here. In the video category, things like uh, captions, descriptions are already out there, um, offline properties, what's the shot, and when you mouse over these, uh, there's actually a tool tip inside here to tell you what that is. Let me show you how deep we can get inside here. This is rights management. So I'm gonna show you that this is a schema that includes properties related to rights management. And if you uh, mouse over, you can see this is text instructions on how a resource can be legally used. And here's a web statement. So I'm gonna turn on all of those, click OK, and then I'm going to scroll all the way over to the right and you can see there they are. There's the owner usage terms and a web statement. I happen to have a URL in here from our wonderful folks at Pond5 and watch what happens. I now have a little link, click on that link and it takes me right to the usage rights for that Pond5 material. For sure, that is really cool. Cause you know what? That travels in the project. It's not going to get lost. Someone's scratching their head say, do we have rights for this? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the log? Where's the note we have on that? It's right inside the media. All right, let's look at labels because they're used uh, in a very important way also. So by default, we get a bunch of colors with the labels. Where are those colors? Back in preferences we can set our label colors and the label defaults. So here's the label colors, and you can just click on these and, and make any changes to the colors you want. And these are the label defaults. Bins are mango, sequence, forest. Mm, I'm getting hungry, video, violet, audio. You get the idea. So if I wanted to search for this particular label, I can click on it, actually right clicking on it, and go to label, select same uh, label group and when I select it you can see this one selected down here and that one selected inside here. So imagine if I had properly labeled all of my stuff correctly and they don't have to be based on, on that. They could be any criteria you want and any color. I could select through thousands of assets and find those right away. All right, so Hopefully now you know how to get organized inside Premiere Pro, even if you get those horrible files that somebody gives you and you know, you're stuck having to organize that. But the best way to work is to use a very nicely laid out uh, and well-structured bin of assets.